Hmm. Haven't haven't seen this video in a while. Let's see how it's hold up. Is this over? This is crap. This is crap right here. This is crap. How long was this supposed to go? It's been over two years. Dang, boy. Great game reminds me of for Great game. This is nothing. Look at this. This is nothing. I'll show you what a great game is. Hey, guys. AP here. And today, we are going to be revisiting the HTML game. Now... Like I said in the intro, it's been two years, and the game hasn't really held up. The code? Mm, probably can go on r slash bad code, if I do say so myself. Uh, but, uh, so that's why I'm here today. Two years later, about two years and, like, a week later, is it a week? It's a bit more, it's a bit over a week. Two, two years and a week later, I'm back with, a uh, new tutorial basically or yeah tutorial it's basically a tutorial because i'm teaching you how to make an html slash js game Woo! isn't that fun so uh yeah i guess uh so i'm gonna start off where i started off in that tutorial series creating the files so the first thing we want to create is the index.html so i actually run the game so we're gonna say control n Yeah, it's working. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to save it as if it loads up. There we go. Index.html. And if we go to here, we're going to say all files. So it actually saves it as an HTML. So let's save that. And so it should make an HTML file. And it did. Okay. So also, there's a bit of a difference. I'm using Visual Code Stu or Visual Studio Code uh, while I use Sublime Text. Uh, it's just because I like Visual Studio Code. A little bit better than my other ones, but it's understandable. Well, well, to begin, obviously, this is not a tutorial on HTML. It's just how to make a game using the canvas. So I'm just going to brief on past this. I'll just let you know what you have to write. So you have to have an HTML tag to actually tell the browser that this is an HTML, like where you want it. Uh, you also want a head have like an, all of the beginning stuff so like the title what you want to call this i'm just going to call this uh html slash js game uh and then in the body is where you want all your elements at so this is where the canvas is going to be and this is where the script for the game is going to be so uh, let's create that it's just going to say uh canvas and the canvas needs three attributes and the attributes just look like this and it needs an ID, so we can actually get the canvas in JavaScript. It needs a width and it needs a height. And obviously that sets the width and height for the canvas. So the ID, we're just going to say uh, this is the canvas. Or we're not going to say canvas. That's too similar to the previous video. Haha. <laughs> we're going to say game because we're making a game, obviously. And uh, the width is going to be 800 and the height is going to be 600. That is going to be the same. I have not really lost that. I've always used that for all these canvases, unless it needs a, a bigger or a smaller one or a specific shape. And, yeah, so the next thing we need to do is we actually need to reference a script to run this. So, script, and it's going to need a source called index.js. Of course, we haven't created that file, so let's create that. Oh, and it auto has the auto format, which is why I also like uh Visual Studio Code because you can do so many uh more it's I don't know what the exact words is like automatic things but like you could I don't know it's just I like it better because it gives me more settings to do more on do more things with it so uh we're gonna create another file called of course index.js like we did before index.js and we're going to say all files and there we go let that load up and yeah there we go we got the index.js uh, just to prove that this is working we're actually going to open it up in our browser so open up the index.html you should get no errors because we haven't written any JavaScript you should have everything working out pretty good so let's open up the console
So now that I have opened up the console, um, uh, we are going to actually now start writing JavaScript. And the first thing we need to do is we actually need to get the canvas object so that we can reference it in index.js. So we are going to say um, let canvas equal document dot get element by ID. And of course the ID is whatever we put for the ID in our canvas, which is game. So game. And then we need the context, which is the drawing surface of the canvas. So context is going to equal a uh, canvas dot get element or not get elements, get context, obviously. And so canvas get context, and we're going to do 2D because we are just doing 2D. There's also WebGL, and that's about it, but, you know, what we what can you do? So now that we have that, this is going to be where things get a little differently. We are going to create a loop function. Uh, and so what we can just say is so we can just say function loop, uh, and we can just say loop down here. And the way we actually make this loop is we need to say window, uh, which is the Chrome tab that's open, which is like this Chrome tab right here, uh, window dot request animation frame. And so what this does is it basically like for 60, it's a basically what we did last time, except in one function, which is amazing. And so now that we have that, uh, we're going to call loop as the callback to keep looping over and over again. And basically, that is our looping function. We also have the canvas in context, so we can draw and get uh, other things with the canvas. And yeah, so just to prove that this is working, I'm going to make a black background, just like I did in the previous two-year-ago tutorial. So I'm going to say canvas, or not canvas, we're going to say context.fillstyle. And I'm going to say this is black, which is the same as saying uh, six zeros and for a hexadecimal. And uh, we're going to have a context.fill rect, uh, which is going to start at zero, zero. Uh, and, it's going to and it's going to end at, or it's going to have a width of canvas.width and canvas.height. And there we go. So what should happen is that a black rectangle should be drawn here, which it does. That means we're doing good. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we are uh, going to make ourselves an object. <laughs> now I think this is where it's going to get real different. <laughs> so we're going to create a new file. This is going to be called um, index. Or not index. It's going to be called player.js. And of course, all files. There we go. So and this is where we're gonna have our player object. This is wildly different from the previous tutorial because we didn't use object-oriented programming at all. We just put use some variables to store the player stuff. But now, uh, or object-oriented programming is gonna be used because it's it's pretty good for games. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make a player object. So we're gonna have ourselves a class called player. And uh, we're going to have a constructor. And in this constructor, we're going to have ourselves an X and Y. So X, Y, and we're going to store that as a position. So position, and we're going to do this as an X and Y. So we can store that as uh, an array, sort of like a vector, but not really a vector, if you know what I'm saying. And then we also need a size, so this dot size. And we're going to set it to 50, why not? And so that's it for what we need right now. Now we're gonna have a few functions. Are you recording? I'm recording. Okay. 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 Okay.
uh, validity. I used a bunch of functions for like draw rect, uh, draw text, and all that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use straight up context uh, because that provides a lot of flexibility with what I can do. So, speaking of context, I need that as a parameter in the shell function because I don't want to use global variables. That's not a, that's not a really good programming practice to use global global variables across classes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say context as a parameter. So when I call show in here, I can just put context as in the function and it will run. Okay, so we need to actually show this player and this player is going to be a rectangle with the size of 50, obviously. So we also we need to set the color, which is going to be white to contrast the black. What is you doing? Recording. Again? Yes. I freaking did this twice in a row already. No, this is the twice in the video. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kayla, <laughs> Ellie, can Ellie say something? What? There you go. Now Ellie ruined your video too. <laughs> that doesn't even close the door. Jeez, man, they've been in my videos quite a lot. <laughs> Anyways, let's try this again. So we're going to just set the color to uh, white, so we can just say white, and that's just a bunch of Fs, six Fs to be exact, <laughs> for the chat boys. <laughs> and so uh, the next thing we have to do is also, also actually draw the rectangle. So fill rect, and we're going to draw it uh, centered uh, on the rectangle. So we're going to say this dot X minus this dot size, or this dot position of the first zero for x, I forgot about that, uh, and we're going to say uh, minus this dot size divided by 2, and the same for the y, and then of course the size of the rectangle is going to be size, so this dot size, size, this dot size, alright, and then obviously we need to set that to y, and that should show it, so in our main loop, we're going to create ourselves a player object, so let player uh, equal new player, and let's just set this in the middle. So canvas dot width divided by two, canvas dot height divided by two. There we go. And so now that we created our player object, we can actually show it in the loop. So player dot show, and of course we need to plug in that context. So if all goes well, we should have a white rectangle right in the middle. And we don't. Oh, it's because I always have a problem with this. We have to actually reference uh, our file into the script. So what we got to do is we got to say script source and then whatever the uh, source is, which is going to be our player. So player.js. And then after that, we should just have, there we go, a player right in the middle. So uh, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Uh, we have made ourselves a main loop, and we have ourselves a player object. So in the next tutorial, we're going to make we're going to be adding some uh, input to this player object. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. If you like the video, make sure to like it. If you want to see more of these, be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.